name's Tom Wong, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own copy of Qubit Touchdown, a quantum computing board game based on American football. You can buy a copy from the Game Crafter, which is a US-based uh, print-on-demand board game manufacturer, but it can be a little expensive, so I'm going to show you how to make your own instead of ordering one. If you order one, it comes with everything shown here. So to play the game, the first thing that you'll need is a game board. So on my website, thomaswong.net, I have a PDF of a printable game board. So you can just print it on your own on a piece of paper that looks like that. Um, or if you want, if you don't have access to a printer, you can just get a piece of paper and you can draw this board yourself. All you really need are these six positions and these black arrows here. Or on the original game board, there would be white arrows. So once you have the game board, you need something to play the role of the football that would move around. You know. And so any little token will, will work. So for example, from some other games, I, I took these pieces out. So here's a little house that you could use. Here's a, a meeple that you could use. Here's some other tokens. So basically, you know, any token you can if, that you have, you can use a rock, something to move around to play the role of the football. So let's say we use this robber. Another thing you need to play this game is you need a binary die. So what comes with the game when you, if you order it is this six-sided die where it's three zeros and three ones. So that way the only outcome is zero and one uh, with 50-50 chance. So you can use anything that has a 50-50 chance and two options. So an example would be a coin. So you can use a coin if you want and you can flip the coin and heads can be zero and tails can be one. And I have a variety of coins here. You can also label your coin. So here this is a zero and then the other side is a one. Or for this quarter, I label it with a little label maker. So that there's zero and there's one. It doesn't have to be two options. You can use a traditional die as well, a six sided die with six with numbers one through six. And you can treat three of the numbers as zero and three of the numbers as one. So for example, you can make all the odd numbers one and all the even numbers zero. Or you can make the numbers one through three zero and the numbers four through six one, you know, something like that. So basically, you know, anything where you have some type of die and have two options. So we can use that. And the final thing you need to play are the action cards. So uh, there are eight different actions. There are a bunch of H cards or Hadamard gates, and you need seven of these. You need seven of these S cards. You need four X, X cards. You need nine Y cards. Uh, you need seven Z cards. You need three I cards. Another three measurement cards. And 12 square root of X cards. And these correspond to the different movements. I have a separate video explaining how to actually play the game. This video is just on how to make the pieces. So to make these cards, uh, there's some different approaches, and here's a little cheat sheet showing how many of each card you need. So the easiest option is I have a PDF on my website, thomaswong.net, where you can print out all of these cards, um, say on cardstock or something thicker, that way your opponent can't see through the card and see what cards you have. So these are made to be duplex on two sides. So you can see here, there are all of the cards that you need. Play the game and you can cut these out. Um, so that you have your own cards. So besides these 52 action cards, there are two more cards, which are the instruction card and uh, a card describing the physics of the game. So these two also come with the game. So this one is how to play and has the rules. And then this one explains some of the physics behind Qubit Touchdown. And so in this PDF with all the cards, it also has those two cards there. Um, if you don't have access to a printer, you can make these game cards um, in other ways. So for example, you can get a pack of index cards and you can just write on them. You know, here's an H card, here's an X card, here's a Y card. And one thing with this is if you're using something like an index card, it's a little bit thin. So you want to write it very lightly. So here I wrote very lightly with a pencil. That way you can't see through it too easily. If you use something like a marker, what happens is that your opponent can see through the card and see what you're holding. So you, you don't want to use something like that. You want to write lightly or use thicker, thicker cards. So you can make your own cards um, using something like index cards. You actually don't need to use cards at all. Another option 
is to just use any type of uniform thing. So here I have a bunch of pieces of cardboard and we can shuffle these just like we can shuffle up playing cards. And you can collect these and you can now use these. So here's a Y, here's a, an I, or an H. I guess I need to, I think this is an I, so you need to specify if this is an I or an H because I use square pieces of cardboard. Here's a measurement, here's an S. So, you know, you can use anything like that as well. So as long as you have all of the cards, again, these 52 action cards on pieces of cardboard, um, you can play this game. So that's all the components you need. Again, you can download uh, these PDF documents from my website at thomaswong.net or you can purchase a copy that's professionally made uh, from thegamecrafter.com.